Hello and welcome once again to St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Roscoe. As we continue our look at our, our baptismal hymn this week and, and, and our own baptisms, thought it might be um, good and, and we'll talk a little bit about where you might see baptismal fonts in churches and, and the reason behind that. Here at St. Paul's, it's, it's kind of right in the middle um, at, the, at the front of the center aisle. And you might also see it if, if there's not a pulpit and lectern in a church, you might see it up in the chancel area. It's the same kind of reason. It's, it's part of the main focus. And we know in our, in our services, in our teachings, in our sermons, um, the focus is always on Jesus Christ. And we talked about yesterday, we'll talk about again today, how in baptism we're connected to Christ. So it's, it's a, fitting, um, a fitting place for it. Um, here we have a Paschal candle that's lit during the season of Easter. It's, it's a reminder that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And, and it's also lit for baptisms as, as a sinful human being is made a dear child of God through water and the word. It's also lit at Christian funerals. Uh, another reminder how, how God um, lights our way throughout our life from baptism and, until he calls us home to him. Now you just heard the, the first stanza of our hymn, God's Own Child, I Gladly Say It. And we're going to see here in this, this introductory stanza, um, it tells us why we can be glad. It tells us how we become God's own child. And it's, it's a phrase we're going to hear over and over again in this hymn, I am baptized into Christ. It really echoes 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. Here's what that says. See the kind of love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. It changed our status. It changed it because, you know, we, we confess here, um, he because I could not pay it, we confess that, that I couldn't pay the debt my sin has incurred. I couldn't possibly hope to satisfy the law's demands. My only hope is, is death, eternal death. And if I might have some kind of inkling there's something I could do, some way I could please God, well, we see as St. Paul writes to, um, to the Romans, we see otherwise. There's no way we could get on the right side of God's judgment. Romans chapter 3, um, selected verses. It says, There's no one who is righteous, not even one. The way of peace they did not know. There's no fear of God in front of their eyes. Now we know that whatever the law says is addressed to those who are under the law, so that every mouth will be silenced and the whole world will be subject to God's judgment. For this reason, no one will be declared righteous in his sight by the works of the law, for through the law, we become aware of sin. We have nothing of value to pay to the God who rightly demands perfection, who demands holiness according to his good and holy will. So here comes the one we needed. Here comes the one that's our only hope. I couldn't pay the penalty. I couldn't pay the price. And so again, we look to Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 5, this time verses 6 and 8. It says, At the appointed time, while we were still helpless, Christ died for the ungodly. But God shows his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The perfect, sinless blood of Christ was what was required pay the penalty for our sin. It's just as John the Baptist said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So we were redeemed. We were bought back. And it was, it was complete. The work of redemption, Jesus said, it is finished on the cross. We know the payment is complete. Um, it was made in his death. And we know that payment was good. It was accepted. It's evidenced in his resurrection from the dead. And so we, we look then and we say, okay, that's, that's the objective fact. Jesus did that, right? We know he died for the sins of the world, so how does it become ours? Well, we heard it yesterday in the, in the introduction, and I'm going to read it for you again. Romans chapter 6, verse 4 says, We were therefore buried with him by this baptism into his death, so that just as he was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too would also walk in a new life. And I mentioned the, the book, the picture book from Gloria Publishing. I'm going to 
pick it up here and I'm going to show you the, the first page. And, and it's the illustration is, is the cover, really. It's, it's parents bringing their child to be baptized um, at their, their church's baptismal font by their pastor. Um, God's own child, I gladly say it, I am baptized into Christ. Then you, you look over to the next page and you see over there the altar area. And, and there's where it says, He, because I could not pay it, gave my full redemption price. And we see um, the altar, right? In the Old Testament, the altar is where they would make the blood sacrifice for the sins of the people, but it wasn't, it wasn't really what they needed. It all pointed ahead to Jesus. Um, so there's that symbolism with the altar. And then there's also the, the crucifix hanging above it um, where we, it's a depiction of, of how Jesus redeemed us by, by shedding his blood, by suffering and dying on the cross. Now, one of the neat things about this book is it's, it's a popular one at our house. And of course, we started out as parents reading it to our children, but, but they really like the book. And so when it's story time, a lot of times one of these gets picked up and, and brought over to us. And you can, you can do some other things with it too. As you read the words of the hymn um, in here, you can look and you can, um, we like to say, okay, where are the crosses? And so we'll look for the, the crosses on each page. And then we'll, we'll take a look at the depictions of this church and, and we'll talk to our kids and say, you know, what's, what's the same um, at our church and what's different from what's, what's illustrated here? And so some good things kind of to keep them interested, a good way, um, again, to teach the faith and, and talk about some of the things that you, you see in church and, and again, some of the things that are different as well. Now, the, the final half of the first stanza then compares the riches of baptism to all the things in the world. And you say, what do I need, right? And I'm going to open up and I'm going to show you the, the, the next page again as well. And you look here and it's, and it's the child sitting among his toys. Um, do I need earth's treasures many? And it says, I have one worth, worth more than any. And, and among all the toys, all the stuff he's got, he's looking up at his baptism certificate. And it, it's kind of the artist depiction showing, you know, really what's important. And, and we might think of, you know, kids thinking they need stuff. But it's really true of all of us. And, and no matter what age, there's always the things um, that, that can distract us, that can cause us to lose sight of our Redeemer. The Apostle Peter reminds us in his letter um, to keep our focus as God's people. Here's what he said. You know that you were redeemed from your empty way of life, handed down to you from your forefathers, not with, the things, not with things that pass away, such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like a lamb without blemish or spot. His blood paid that penalty. His blood gives us that which is most precious to us. And all the things, right? All the things will pass away. But that which brings us salvation free, our hymn says, will last truly to eternity. Christ's work paid our penalty. Redeemed us from sin, death, and the devil. And so we're no longer bound by sin, but it says we are alive in Christ. And, and St. Paul, when he wrote to the Galatians, said it this way, So you're no longer a slave, but a son. And if you are a son, then you are also an heir of God through Christ. Sounds good, doesn't it? God's own child, I gladly say it. I am baptized into Christ. Thank you for joining us for our look at the first stanza of this hymn today. We're going to continue tomorrow and, and we're going to address the first of what's sometimes called the unholy trinity, those enemies that I mentioned yesterday. We're going to, we're going to see how the hymn addresses sin. And as God's own child, we can stand tall in the, in the face of the threats that sin throws at us. Thank you for joining us. I'll have the, the, the words to stanza two at the end of the video here, um, and, and we'll see you tomorrow. God's blessings on your day.